Now, before we go into the detail on offshore wind and kind of a lot of the backstory and what it is and different projects and different kind of stuff, can I ask you what it's like to work or what it was like to work at Renewable UK? Because as an outsider kind of looking in, I was, I'm a charter mechanical engineer by background, so I understand technically stuff. But actually, whenever you enter a new industry, you're always trying to find information from somewhere. And the people I saw at the top of the tree was yourselves. Um, and it's almost, you know, but as an organization that looks at after lots of different technologies and stakeholders and things, what was it like to work there? What, you know, what were your interactions with government like? And actually, how did the whole thing feel like from the inside? It was a really great experience. Um, it was my second trade association. So I'd already experienced Scottish renewables and that was, um, that was a difficult job and that was lots of technologies and very few people. Whereas Renewable UK was a larger, much larger organization. Um, and I enjoyed the working with the members and the people because you got to learn so much. Um, and particularly with the RUK staff, you would learn you know, really bright people coming in who are really passionate about climate change and renewables um, and doing great things and working really hard. So it's, there's a real, Renewable UK has always had a really strong ethos that's come from the staff. Mm -hmm. um, when I was there, Hugh McNeil, the, now the outgoing chief executive, wanted to do work to embed and instill culture, but it was really clear that it wasn't about him saying what the culture should would be about recognizing that culture that existed and it's always been a strength even in hard times for the organization that mm -hmm. you have a, a network of people who care for each other and support each other and then you have a network of members who are really keen and individuals in those companies want to achieve things and get things done so when it works it's great you've got this real feeling of momentum i think the problems i experienced come from either when government stops listening which they did while i was there we had um conservative um, Lib Dem coalition or they're a conservative um, government and, and there are ups and downs in policy and that was when Cameron's green crap stuff was coming out and offshore wind and onshore wind were good and then they were no good and um, and how you had to fight that and manage members um, expectations mm -hmm. um, and the problem with the trade body is if things are going against you in the policy sphere well, well that's you might not cause that but you're the people who have paid to help fix that because some of these things take a long time. Um, so, it's, so it's great to see now Renewable UK working, if you like, with the, you know, the wind behind it, because it's got a government who's finally come around to all the values that, that, that wind offers, not just offshore, but onshore as well. Mm -hmm. um, and when, for example, Boris Johnson uh, in September, October, stood up at the Conservative Party conference, gave a speech where he said for the first time what, um, many people knew he's going to eat sort of their drip fed about offshore wind being critically important and setting a target at 40 gigawatts. So he re restated for the first time the manifesto commitment. And he, he cleverly said, and some people used to say that wind would never even blow the skin off a rice pudding. Um, but I say, and it was a clever thing to do because he was the person who said that. Yeah. And so his mind has been changed and the mind of the Conservative Party was changed and the mind of a lot of people has changed because of facts and what you couldn't and evidence you couldn't ignore and the work of people like the UK. So, okay. yeah. Okay. It was just as an outsider, almost with any trade body, and there are lots and there are some really, really good ones. I was on a webinar from one earlier today um, and it's just they play a valuable role. Like a lot of it is stakeholder engagement that people often don't see. Um, but I just thought I wanted to pick your brains. Yeah. 